Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine, and we're going to continue um, chapter 4 today, and we're going to talk about understanding light and energy. Um, in the first part of our notes, we talked about um, light and wavelengths and that kind of stuff, and so now we're going to talk a little bit more about understanding energy and light, and specifically about the hydrogen spectrum. So, um, the line emission spectrum is what results when electric current is passed through a vacuum tube that contains hydrogen gas, and a pink glow is observed when that happens. And if um, the light is then passed through a prism or a spectroscope, it separates out into four bands of lines in the visible region of light. And these four bands are part of what's known as hydrogen's line emission spectrum. And during this time frame when atomic theory was being advanced, people were trying to understand what was going on with hydrogen and why there were these lines. And later on, two additional series of lines were discovered in the ultraviolet and infrared regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. So. Uh, what I'm talking about here is this is a vacuum tube and there's hydrogen gas in it and if you pass uh, current through it, if you uh, use energy, plug it in, um, what you observe is this kind of pinkish glow and if you use a spectroscope like this, which you might have encountered at the junior high, there's a prism inside of it and so you look through the one end and you see something at the other end and for hydrogen what you will see is just this series of lines and um, this, these bands of lines. And if you looked at sunlight, you would see this continuous spectrum with your whole range of visible light, the rainbow. So classical atomic theories predicted that hydrogen should emit that continuous range of frequencies, the continuous spectrum that I showed you in the previous slide. But instead, there were just these very discrete single lines, and attempts to explain it led to the new theory, which is called the quantum theory, and that's our current theory of atoms. And uh, when a hydrogen atom is excited by absorbing energy, um, electricity for instance, it goes up and the atom uh, goes to an excited state, and when it relaxes back down to a lower energy state called the ground state, it emits a photon of radiation. So Niels Bohr, who also received a Nobel Prize, all these guys received Nobel Prizes, um, he uh, proposed that electrons have a very fixed energy and move in these very specific energies around the nucleus. And they don't fall into the nucleus because electrons can only have very fixed quantities of energy. Um, and his model of the atom is often called the uh, planetary model because you're picturing a nucleus at the center and then the electrons have these very specific energy levels where they can occur. So what Bohr proposed is that the energy levels for an atom are like the rungs of a ladder. Electrons cannot be in between the levels. They need to be at these specific energy levels. Um, and if they move from one level to another, they have to have that specific amount of energy. And Bohr's model of the hydrogen atom explained these observed spectral lines. And it did not explain the spectra of atoms with more than one electron, but if you were just talking about hydrogen, which again only has one electron, the Bohr model explained why they saw the lines in the hydrogen spectrum. So what's going on with the hydrogen spectrum is the atom absorbs a specific amount of energy and the electrons move up to a higher energy level and then when they relax back down to where they came from, they emit that same quantity of energy. So the energy is emitted when the electron falls back to its ground state, and that is, if it's in the visible region, that is accompanied by an emission of light. So again, this is what the hydrogen emission spectrum looks like. 
So the lowest energy state of an atom is called its ground state, and that's the state in which the atom is at its lowest energy. Any time it has a higher energy um, than in its ground state, it's called a so-called excited state. So absorb energy, jump up to an excited state, relax back down, emit energy, and you're back to your ground state. So you can think of it as Miss Augustine with too much coffee, I drink coffee, I jump up to an excited state, I jump around, expend a lot of energy, and get back to my ground state when I collapse again. So atoms are absorbing and releasing photons as electrons are moving from one energy level to another. That's how atoms produce light. So you can think of it as if these are two atoms, you can think of incoming light as energy and that causes the electron to jump up and in this case it's jumping two energy levels and here in this um, electron down here it's jumping just to one and then when it relaxes back down again it emits that same quantity of energy and again that same quantity of energy and if that energy happens to be in the visible region we perceive it as whatever color is associated with that wavelength. So there's three groups of lines in the hydrogen spectrum. Know them. You are responsible to know them. Uh, so only one of them is visible, and that's the Balmer series. The Lyman series is in the ultraviolet region, and the Passion series is in the infrared region. Again, only visible ones are the Balmer. So now we can use the equations that were in our first set of notes to calculate frequency and energy. So what is the frequency of light that has a wavelength of 500 nanometers? And remember, a nanometer is 10 to the minus 9 meter. And our equation is C, the speed of light, is equal to wavelength times frequency. So starting here with our wavelength identifying variables our wavelength is 500 nanometers which is the same as 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters to put it into correct scientific notation which good thing your calculator will do this for you you would move this decimal two places and that would then give us 5.00 times 10 to the minus 7th meters why do I want meters because my C, my speed of light, is in meters per second. So now C is our constant, 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, and frequency is what we're trying to figure out. So here I've rearranged the equation, so I've divided both sides by lambda, and that gives me that nu, the frequency, is equal to C, the speed of light, divided by lambda, the wavelength. So let's plug in the numbers. So here's my speed of light, here's my wavelength, and then I have to check my units. Meters divided by meters goes away. So that comes out to 5.8708 times 10 to the 14th, 1 over seconds. 10 to the 14th is a good number for frequency in the visible region of light, and that's what we're talking about here. And my unit is uh, 1 over seconds. So now going up to the given, it was 500 with three significant digits. So coming over here, my 7 is my last significant digit. So my correct answer would be 5.87 times 10 to the 14th, three sig figs. And I used hertz instead of 1 over seconds. So now we can calculate energy. So we're going to determine the energy of light that has a frequency of 6.00 times 10 to the 14th seconds to the minus 1 or 1 over seconds, three sig figs here. Identifying the variables h is Planck's constant, nu is our given, and e is what we're trying to calculate. So remember our equation is e equals h times nu, which is Planck's constant times frequency. So now we're going to plug in numbers. E is equal to, here's Planck's constant, times here is our frequency. We have to inspect the uh, units. So seconds 
cancels out, and that's going to leave us with joules. When we plug that into our calculator, we get E equals 3.978. That is 4 sig figs. So to end it with 3 sig figs would be at the 7, but the number immediately following it is an 8. So we're going to have to round that. That gives us 3.98 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. So if we know the frequency, we can calculate the energy. So now we can start talking a little bit more about how this relates to the quantum model. So this fellow, Louis de Broglie, who I think also received a Nobel Prize, um, said that we can uh, treat electrons as waves. We can treat them as waves that are confined around an atomic nucleus. And he proposed this in 1924. So de Broglie's equation, lambda is equal to h, that's Planck's constant over mv mass times velocity. Um, so this concept that electrons could be considered as waves confined around an atomic nucleus allowed us to understand better why we see electrons uh, causing light emission spectra for our atoms. So the electron waves can only exist at these specific frequencies that correspond to specific energies, and these are the same quantized energies that we talked about uh, with the Bohr model and the Bohr orbits. And his hypothesis was confirmed by experiments, and again, he also received a Nobel Prize in, I think it was 1929, for his atomic uh, contributions to atomic theory. So for now, this is Ms. Augustine. The next set of slides will be about the quantum mechanical model in more detail. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.